All right, Junkie Nation, gorgeous Georgian goes deliver yet again. We got another MMA superstar. This time it's former two-time Olympic gold medalist, world champion gold medalist, as well as the current uh, 2009, excuse me, uh, lightweight champion at PFL. It's Kayla Harrison. Hi, Kayla. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Hey, if Impractical Joker starts filming again, are we going to see a third a cameo by Kayla Harrison? <laughs> I, I love seeing you throw murder through tables. I would definitely do that. You know, they actually offered me a job when I, when I filmed that. So I told them I'm I'm going to try this MMA thing out. But if it doesn't work, I'll give you guys a call. What was going to be the job? Following them around and beating them up. Oh, wow. <laughs> nice. Okay. God, I almost wish I almost wish you would have taken that job because that would have been <laughs> fun to watch too. That that Sal kind of gets on my nerves a little bit too with his you know he's he's a little quirky there with the. Uh, Cleansy, cleanliness, I guess. Ah, uh, they're all super nice guys. Yeah. Hey, um, you know, we talked about you, the intro, you being a, an Olympic gold medalist in judo. I wanted to ask you a question. I think it's fair. Um, Carl Lewis had some comments about the United States track team because they, one of their strengths is the sprints and they failed to qualify their four by 100 meter team. And I wanted to ask you, what do you think uh, the judo association, the United States could do to get the USA judo Kind of where maybe not Japan because they just knocked it out of the park, but let's say France and Germany, you know, grabbing some medals, competing. Um, yeah, I actually made a funny enough, I made a comment about this last night. Um, people were online kind of having the same conversation, and I think that a really good model to look at is USA wrestling. Um, first and foremost, obviously, wrestling is in the school system, so that's a huge bonus. Judo is in the school systems in Japan and France. Um, a lot of those countries offer judo programs. Um, so I think the first step would be not, it doesn't have to be in schools, but I think after school programs, my daughter's school offers all kinds of unique after school, um, you know, programs and things for them to do like knitting, like stuff you wouldn't even think of. So I know that it's possible to have judo and after school programs. I think that's a good way, good place to start the grassroots level. Um, and I think USA wrestling does a really good job of keeping their alumni, you know, whether you're an Olympic champion or, you wrestled in high school, pretty much every single Olympic wrestler I've met is still involved in the sport in some way, shape or form. And I think USA Judo doesn't do a good job um, of keeping their alumni and, and to be quite honest, of keeping their superstars. You know, I'm the only Olympic champion the U.S. has ever had and I'm no longer involved in the sport. And that's mostly because I was ostracized and um, I just feel like even after, like, say Rio, before I decided to do MMA, I said to my manager, hey, let's do a tour, um, a judo tour, and I'll go and I'll teach judo in all these different states to all these, you know, people who've never seen it before. I'll bring my gold medals. Similar to kind of what the USA Gymnastics team does. They do, like, the Kellogg's tour. Um, and I, But I wanted to be paid for it. You know, I wanted... I had, at the time I had, you know, no college degree. I had no real life work experience. I had just spent my entire life, um, you know, training to win our country two Olympic gold medals. And I was met with a lot of animosity and I was told like, Oh my, like, we can't pay you. Like, what are you talking about? Um, so I found my own way in a different path and, you know, found MMA and it's turned out to be very lucrative for me. But, um, I think that, you know, from the top to the bottom, USA Judo could do a much, much better job of keeping people involved um, and having a grassroots program, a grassroots effort, you know? I think you would have been one heck of an ambassador. Oh, sure. thank you. I yeah, mean, and that's not to say, listen, uh, I want to clarify that um, although I'm not involved with USA Judo, the governing body, uh, I still, you know, Judo will always be my first love. And any judoka who's out there who's, uh, you know, uh, aspiring to be the next Olympic champion or whatever it may be, you know, I'm in your corner and I'm so grateful for um, the discipline that, you know, gave me a life I never dreamed of. When I was looking at your Instagram, you know, one of the recent posts was you receiving the gold medal and, you know, you, you were shedding tears and then you wrote a very inspirational, uh, some lines there to go mm -hmm. with it. And I wanted to ask you, um, so what, even when it's not during Olympics time, when you hear... Dun, 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 dun. you know, the Olympics theme. Is that similar to you kind of like, for example, I love hearing the pride theme. Dun, 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 you know? And pride's been gone since 2007. 
But something about when I hear it, I'm like, oh man, I just love it. Is that kind of what the Olympic thing is for you? And, and and what do you feel like when you just hear it randomly, I guess? For sure. I mean, it's, you know, it's one of those things where, um, you know, some days I still can't believe my life to, to train every day, um, to hope to represent your country one day, to be, to be the 0.1%, 0.001% of the population, to get to go represent your country on the greatest stage in the world, um, and to get to reach your goal and win an Olympic gold medal, but get to go and reach your goal and win an Olympic gold medal and be the first in history to ever do it for your country is like, I really can't believe this is my life sometimes. And it, it all, you know, anytime I watch the Olympics or think about the Olympics, I get uh, nostalgia and emotional. And um, I'm super proud of everything I accomplished during my judo career. And to be honest, it just fires me up for what I have left to accomplish in my MMA career. You know, that's the past. I'm proud of my past, but I'm looking forward to the future. We told you we would get a little silly. And when we make a promise, we keep it. So I wanted to ask you, uh, whenever there's Olympic talk at our dinner table, we're not really big athletes. We were growing up, but not anymore. But we all often talk about what if there was the every man or every woman Olympics? Uh, what event do you think you could get a gold in? And I'll give you an example. I heard being late at our dinner table. I think George one time said he could compete in snoring, competitive snoring. What uh, what's the one thing that you do really well outside of like competition that if it were an event, you'd take a gold there too. Um, oh, I think um, I'm probably really, I'm like an Olympic champion in time management. Like I have myself, two kids, two trainings a day, private schools to prepare for, doctor's appointment, dentist, you know, two dogs, all this stuff going on, my mom, a house, everything. To, to manage and somehow I still all get, get all of it done. So I feel like I would have a gold medal in time management. Nice. I like that one. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So outside of combat sports, have you ever found something that replicates that high that George was talking about earlier, the, the high of winning? Is there anything out there that replicates that or even comes close? Um, I mean, to be honest, I'm in the process of adopting my kids, my niece and nephew and, uh, you know, as far as my career, nothing has ever, has ever felt as good as winning an Olympic gold medal. But, um, you know, knowing that I'm going to hopefully be a game changer in my kid's life and give them um, a stable, healthy, safe environment for them to flourish and thrive and, and to be a part of sort of um, breaking the cycle of trauma and, you um, you know, changing their lives, that's probably the most rewarding thing I've ever done. Very well said. How about uh, one thing that I've noticed interviewing you throughout the years is pressure and how well you handle it. Um, but that's not to say, you know, sometimes you can't judge a book by its cover. We don't know what you're thinking on the inside, but <laughs> have you gotten to a point where you've just been able to control pressure so well that we don't even notice it? Or do we not know, but deep down on, on the inside, is it is it difficult, Kayla, like what you do? 100% it's difficult. It's, um, you know, there are good days and bad days. I think the difference between, um, again, it's all management. Like I understand that sports and my career and especially – this journey is a roller coaster and there are going to be good days and there are going to be bad days and there's going to be loops and there's going to be turns that you didn't expect and um learning how to manage all of that and understand that it's all part of the journey to get to where i want to go is um <laughs> do you hear my two-year-old having a tantrum um is all part of the is all part of the process but for sure i have you know the pressure gets to me some like I, I want I expect perfection and for instance yesterday I had a terrible workout I broke down in tears but I know that that's part of the journey and that that day that moment where I broke down in tears but then I continued to rep it out and figure it out is um it is why I'm gonna be champion sorry you got Jenna Fabian ahead of you on the 19th and that would be the semi-final and mm -hmm. then you got the final and then of course you're gonna get the UFC questions I'm gonna leave that to the side You've answered that before. What I want to know is, will there be a pit stop back at Invicta? Is there unfinished business there? Um, mm, 
I mean, I think probably, you know, this is, um, I have two fights in front of me. I have to go out there and kill for the love of killing. Those are my focus. Um, and I know that if I do everything right and, and go out there and keep my head down and work hard that, um, most likely I'll be the biggest, one of the biggest free agents, um, hopefully in the history of the sport. So, um, unless PFL, you know, comes to the table and, um, offers me life-changing money, we'll see what happens. But right now my focus is just to win these two fights. Mm -hmm. When you see Chris Cyborg post all those belts that she's had, and then, you know, your teammate Amanda Nunes is known as the GOAT because she's she's been having one heck of a run at UFC. What kind of career do you want to have? Like, is it pretty cool, do you think, to have touched a few different organizations and succeeded there? Or is that not even a worry? Do you just want to be known as number one one day? Um, I mean, I think both of their careers sort of speak for themselves. I think they're both unique and um, impressive in their own right. And you know, my job is to go out there and be equally as impressive and then more impressive. So I'm not sure exactly what road I have to, to take to get there, but um, I'm looking forward to the journey very much. And then the last two questions I have, they're quick ones. What's Kayla Harrison's favorite workout of the week? You know, time management, I'm sure you have a schedule, wrestling, jujitsu, strength and conditioning. Which one's like That's yes, easy. my favorite That's and which one do you absolutely hate? That's easy. Sparring is my favorite. Um, and I hate, I don't hate any of them. I, I enjoy what I do. I love the process. I love um, waking up every day and doing what I love, getting a little bit better. But sparring is definitely my favorite. I like to, I like to punch people. Can you believe how scary that is to your future competitors to know that <laughs> you like them all? <laughs> Like, seriously, like that, that's a gangster answer in a way because everyone gets mad at me because when I go to the gym, like Richie and Dan, Dan, the owner and Richie, the manager, they're always like, they were just talking to their podcast about how I'm like, ridiculously excited. I walk in the gym and I'm doing the Ric Flair. Woo! And I'm like, let's go, baby. Like, it's, it's training time. And like, they call, they call me nails because they say my voice is like nails on a chalkboard, but I'm just so excited to be there with the people that I really enjoy learning from and, and doing what I love. So yeah, it is scary because I'm just getting better. I have one more that I want to sneak in. We have two good friends over at your gym, King Mo and Jorge Masvidal. I want to know from you, who would you rather if we could put them in a dunk tank, you get to put a pie in their face and then you get a, you get to dunk them of the two. Who, who would you rather do that to? Um, Man, King Mo's so cool. I think I definitely, I'd rather dunk, <laughs> dunk Georgie just because he's like, he thinks he's so fly. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm oh, sweet Jesus. Funny. You know, like, that, would, that, would, that would bring a smile to my face for sure. Nice. All right. Hey, thank you so much for the time. We appreciate you. We appreciate the run that you've been on in MMA because we got to cover it from beginning to end. Oh, thank so, you guys um, for all the coverage. You're, you're an outstanding it. representative of our sport. Good luck Thank to you and everything. You. Sorry and about that little uh, uh, <laughs> break there. My bad. I'm sorry. No, I, I mean, that's, so that's amazing what you're doing. And and like you said, it's it's the most important thing in your life right now. So, yeah, by all means. Okay. All right. Thank you Thanks, very much. Thanks, guys. We'll talk we'll soon. You.